All right, Shalom, Shalom. You brothers of Great Millstone, the church in Birmingham, Alabama. As always, we want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory. Yeah, the ancient Hebrew Tom, those would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, the only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also want to say Shalom to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, men who we believe through faith to be raised up here in the latter days to you know, contribute to the erecting and establishing of the house of David, all right, uh, to the fellow laborers who are coming to that work, that labor, and those of you who believe on that testimony, Shalom. All right, uh, so we back out here once again through the spirit of power of Yahweh Shem El and you already know what it is. You know, if you're a follower of the doctrine, all right, the testimony of Yahweh Shem then you will know by now that the overtone uh, of the message is prophecy, all right? Our universe centers around the spirit of prophecy, which the idea of prophecy pretty much outlines and projects the bleak and a very disturbing future of America. Y'all good. Okay, Babylon the Great, all right, which is reported within the Holy Scriptures. That's the spirit. It's like, yeah, that, that righteous, see that? I can't have that shit. Yeah, that's what it is. The brother just said. Why the hell? See that? The spirit, man. Kill that. Stupid ass. See? Yeah, sorry, hey. Bro. Hey, no, no, bro, it's all right. Yeah. Hey, 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 that's true. You know they, hey, it was like a force field. They, they can't handle that shit. Yeah, they can't handle it. Excellent. Hey, and it was right as I was speaking about prophecy, man. Because prophecy really, um, prophecy is, is, is detailed. What I mean, it speaks in specifics. So prophecy is not just some random, you know, throwing something to the wall hoping it stick. No, it's very detailed. It, it gives a graphic. First of all, it, it, it lays out a vivid illustration of the future as touching the wrath of your how about and how was shot, which is geared. Matter of fact, give me Jeremiah for the Yep, which is yep, which is aimed towards a certain people, man. Hey, just like when uh, Moses and Aaron was raised up in the stead of the prophets, they were sent to they were sent to Pharaoh. They wasn't just wandering aimlessly through Egypt, right? Forcing their disappearance for the, that condition or that state that they was in. It was strategic, all right? They went to Mo, I mean, like it. Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh, and they went to the house of Pharaoh. So it's the same with uh, what we present unto you, which is the same doctrine. Right? I'll tell you that the second Peter uh reserved by the same word. Right, so come on. Jeremiah 49 and 8. Flee ye, turn back, well deep, O inhabitants of the Dan. Mm -hmm. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him mm -hmm. the time that I will visit him. Right, yep. The word that should jump out there is time. So that was a, a, a specific time in which the Lord would visit this Edom here. I would say Esau. All right, so let's find out who Esau is. Go to uh, uh, Genesis. That's been coming out. Yeah. Genesis 36. You got something? Oh, okay, kind. That's good. Whoever get it first, then. This is Genesis chapter 36 mm -hmm. and verse 9. It says, and after these, excuse me, and these are the generations of Esau. Right, and these are the generations of Esau, where? The father of the Edomites. The father of the Edomites. In Mount Seir. In Mount Seir. Hey, so that links up to Ezekiel, the 35th chapter. Um, Matthew, uh, what's that, Matthew? Is that Matthew, the 24th chapter? Well, uh, it speaks about that, that mountain being cast into the sea. Well, that mountain represents a certain people, and that people is Esau, Edom. Which the brother just read in the prophecy, right? Jeremiah, the 49th chapter, where that would be a time where the Lord would visit this mountain. All right? Guess what? Yeah, Con. Mm -hmm. Just going back, like you said, how prophecy is detailed. The scriptures like the diary of the Lord. Uh, this is Jeremiah 30 and 24. The first anger of the Lord shall not return mm -hmm. until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart. Right, the intents of his heart, man. So everything that you witness is pretty much a thought of your how about Shemel Shah. All right, America, 
this system, how it's structured. All right, the vibration here. So this is nothing random. America was strategically set up. It was a part of the Lord's purposes. His intent to set this place up to destroy it. Why? Because that's the inheritance of Esau. Remember the scriptures refer to this man as the son of perdition. And that's why the Bible never registered with average people. Right? Just imagine someone come up out of church. All right, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. Someone who has somewhere to feel for the Bible, right? They got a Bible and they proximity. Well, they can't entertain this form of teaching. All right, because they don't uh, uh, have the mental capacity to embrace the idea of your how about some hour shot predetermining everything that's unfolding, you know? And the fact that the conclusion of the matter would be that this place will be destroyed. All right, so come on. Con, it says, in the latter days, ye shall consider it. Right, which when you go into that word consider, when you look it up, it translates to teach. So what the scriptures are saying here, yeah, y'all good, you good? Mm -hmm. In the latter days, there will be certain spirits raised up who will teach the idea of the Lord's anger. Right? The wrath of your how about you now was shot. Hey, was that shouldn't be a foreign concept. If you really was into the scriptures, what you should take from it is that the Lord has always exacted his vengeance through violence, through the act of violence, bloodshed. You know, the Lord has always submitted his, his uh, uh, justice through judgment. So this shouldn't be a foreign idea. Nevertheless, it is. Why? Because the so-called white man has had dominion over the planet Earth, which by default has contributed to the misinformation, the disinformation that's on display. Again, that's why it's always going to be a friction. That's the point. Mm -hmm. This is Psalm chapter 89 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Right, the habitation. Look that word habitation over real quick. So what we read in here is uh, the characteristics, if you will, that, that, you know, the, the traits of the jurisdiction and power of Yahweh Bashan al -Shah. First and foremost, there is no limits. It's timeless. The extent, the influence of Yahweh Bashan al -Shah, man. You know, I'm going to show you, show you that in the spirit. Here it is. This is supposed to be a modern world, right, with phones. And yet the Lord got the ancient prophets amongst you with Timberlands on and Jay, you know. But that modern realm couldn't stop the influence of your house by some house Yeah, go ahead, huh? Huh, it's Strong's H, 43, 49. It says, fix or establish place. Right, so the habitation of the throne of the Lord, that word habitation goes into something that's fixed, established. You know, it it pretty much uh, frames a uh, approach of, uh, I'm not budging. You know, I'm, I'm firm. My stance, I'm taking a hard stance, all right? So the habitation of the Lord centers around justice and judgment, go ahead. It says foundation. Foundation, so the very foundation, which when you go into the word foundation, it takes you back to basis. Matter of fact, continue these God. definitions. It says a basis. A basis, because the foundation is a base. That's why you even hear in the dialogue, right? Someone might say, well, the basis of my, or the ground, of my argument, it goes back to the foundation. So the Lord's foundation centers around justice and judgment. That's why we know that this ministry, it links back to the uh, will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Why? Because it serves as a symbol of justice and judgment, man. See, no other doctrine can make sense. It, it can't filter through the scripture. Christianity, in the modern sense of the word, the rallying cry is not justice. No, go ahead. It says dwelling place. Dwelling place. So let's read scripture again. Come. It's Psalms chapter 89 and verse 14. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. See that? The habitation of the throne of the Lord. And again, the word habitation goes in the what? Uh, fixed place. Basis. So this, this is the Lord's stance. Justice and judgment. And that's a direct attack, if you're paying attention, that's a direct attack on Esau's existence, which revolves around injustice. 
thievery, robbery, murder, right? Fraud. See? So by default, you're out by some outsiders against the so-called white man at the door. Right off the bat, as they say. Hey, come on. This is Romans chapter 9 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. It says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, yep. even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. Right, yep, the same purpose. What do you mean, uh, Romans 9 and what? 17. Can I say something about that, yeah, something that purpose? That's going to the intents of the Lord's heart. Because if you read the Lord talking about our delivering on the children of Israel from the land of Egypt uh, to Abraham. Genesis. You know, so that was the that was the intent of the Lord of Hearts. So it's for his purpose, you know. Yeah. And it's a symbolic overtone to those acts, those accounts. Yeah. All right, being brought out of Egypt, the decree going forth to release my people. All right, then when you read Revelation 11 chapter, it refers to America as Egypt, which is ironically the place of the captivity of the people here on this sign. See that? So the scriptures make sense. They come together in her beauty, just like a portrait, all right? When everything come together, then the results, it makes sense. It's clarity. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm comforted now. That's why the scripture speaks about the end of a thing. Better is the end of a thing. All right, come on. This is Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Right, and there's no way around it. You're going to eventually come back to this source. If you truly digging, you know, somebody say, you're going to find what you're looking for. You keep bringing up the scripture. <laughs> that's a list. That's a serious. <laughs> you keep bringing up the scripture you want. Right? Because eventually we're going to get around to Jacob and Esau on you. You see that? That's why, like, the longer these Edomites, if they hang around, they can start off cordial. But the longer you, in, you inquire, you're going to have to, by default, go into the source of the problem, man. It's the same uh, as the, when you go to the physician. Eventually, you get to the bottom of things. You tell the physician your problem, what ails you, which in this case would be you inquiring, you want to know what. Know what's going on here. But then we get to the bottom of it. All right? Yep, go ahead. It says, What shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Is there unrighteousness with the most high? Yeah, read it again. Cut. This is, uh, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Right, see, but Esau have I hated, man. Jacob and Esau. They got a man who I thought to replies against the most high. Shall the thing form Satan in him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? Have not the powder power of the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor? So that was Esau's lot, to be a vessel unto dishonor, man. And who are you to, to come against the words of Yahweh by Shah Shah? That's this is willing to show his wrath, going back to that wrath, man. All right, and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. So, as we brought out earlier, he is tailor made for destruction, man. He's the son of perdition. That's why he was raised up to be in this exalted state so the Lord can show his power. Yep. That's his very reasoning for being. Okay. Guess so? No, I'm pretty good. All right. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Oh, you sent the brother. It's good right now. Yeah, just give us a, uh, uh, give us a thumbs up if, you know, if everything good as far as the audio. Mainly the audio, okay? If, if the video pause or whatever is out there, don't you hear uh, he's taking Exodus chapter 6 and uh, verse 7. Then Esther I said, What shall be the parting asunder of the time? Right, so this is what you should be inquiring of. All right? This age and, and, and the closure of the so called white man's dominion over the planet Earth, which will usher in a new uh, uh, system, which will come in the form of the kingdom of heaven. All right? This is what the wise is going to inquire of. Not, not if the so-called white man is going to bounce back. 
You know, we gain his footing and, and, and hit the reset button and reestablish his dominion on the planet Earth. This is not what we're concerned with. All right, the Bible promotes a transition of power where the high and lofty would be debased, brought low, and the poor and the needy would be exalted and raised up. See? Hey, that's a shock value that come with that. Nobody want to hear that. That the people that was the butt of your joke, you know, you're out. Whenever you wanted to blame somebody, you always had the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American. You know? But we promote the idea of those same people being raised up. And not only raised up, but to have dominion over the nation, man. Hey, that's why, again, that's why so much friction that comes with the uh, testimony of Yahweh Shah. It says, or oh, when shall be the end of the first mm -hmm. and the beginning of it that follows? Right, so if you're in the right spirit, then your desire is, is to be comforted by the closure of this system and the ushering in of a new system, which again, let's go on to that, all right? The new kingdom is going to represent peace. See, think about it. As long as you're here, man, it's going to always be an obstacle, a challenge, a hurdle. We have seen it, it's been laid out. You know these niggas who have came out of the hood, so to speak. I made it, right? Well, we found out that they haven't made it, that's all. They're being plagued with demons. You know, they have to commit acts, vile acts and sacrifices and lewd activities they witness. Uh, that, that demon of uh, depression, that plagues the minds of those who are perceived to be well off. So there's no rest here. Matter of fact, give me that. So you have to be out of your mind to become acclimated to prison. Now you see the most sickest guys. Like the niggas who got life. They got 99 years of shit. Well, they, they jail cell look like home. They got pictures, they got pictures up and shit, curtains. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they got a whole picture in that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got a change of fucking outfit, you know what I mean? Mm. See, that's a sign, that's a sign of uh, weakness, man. Really, that's what it is. It's a sign of weakness, you know, because you have you have submitted, you have you fully subjected yourself to your enemy. But what contributes to that? You are not comforted. You didn't get the report that you were going to be released. You thought that this was a perpetual state for you. But see, we have been uh, rejuvenated, re-energized. There's been a spark of life infused in us through the word, because the report entails what? We are free. The Lord have released us. The Lord have once more shown favor on us. So now we optimistic. You take two guys in jail, one guy know he got life without him, versus the guy who know he'll get out in a few years. He knows the end of, no, they actually call it EOS, the end of your sentence. That means you see the, the light at the end of the phone. That guy's gonna operate different. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna, uh, Understand that there's a, a world beyond the wall versus the guy who don't have that hope. He's going to be settled in. And you know what, what his mantra is going to be? You only live once. Now he's dating guys, and, you know? And that's sick too. Esau, you know, hey, but sometimes we got to get to you wrong like that. Esau behind that. Because really, you're supposed to, uh, judgment should be swift, man. You should have a guy sitting up. That wears on you. That that demoralizes you, man. That proves that Esau the fucking devil. He do animals like that. I was watching where they had this cow at a stall. I should have saved it, man. They led him in the stall. And it's a new, high-efficient stall now. You know, like you think of a, a stall, you just go in and move this trap door and that trap door. No, this shit is a, a computer ride. The, star, the cow came in, he made his way to this little hole, and then the shit came down and closed on his neck, you know? And they, in the video, the short, that was on the short. 
uh, it's set off, man. So that shows that Esau, you know, he kind of, you know, he gets off on, uh, you know, oppressing you, right? So that prison system shit, which is nothing wrong with having slaves, you might even have a dungeon, right? Really going to it. King David, you know, you know. But when it comes to like justice, you got niggas sitting on death row. He already convicted him. He already did it. What you got him sitting up there? If Esau get off on uh, contributing, you know, that depression spirit, that spirit of death, that spirit of woe to the planet Earth. That's why even with John the Baptist, remember they, they were the same devil. They were the Romans. They had him in prison, and it, it was it was pretty much almost broken spirit. Remember, because his faith was tested. He said. He sent out by his men, Lord, as you the one. Yep, go ahead. Huh? I got no, no, go ahead. Yeah, uh, this Psalm said the three. I'm gonna start at three, but I'm gonna jump down. It says, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So J Bob, like you said, how people see Babylon like Esau have set the standard of what is life, you know, what you know, and that would take him. They go chase the bag or what the case may be to uh you know like you said make com uh, prison more comfortable they already know that they're gonna die but you know they already trying to uh you know they got a uh, what they call it 10 things you got to do before you die shit. Bucket list. Bucket list. Yeah, they see. yeah they want to jump out of fucking plane before they die they already know in their mind they're gonna die though you know but the point is Esau have set the standard now people have followed those ways man it says for there are no bands in their death but their strength is fire. So if you see that this man have power, you know, that green tree flourishing, this man got this, you know, his military might, his face on the might, you know? And that's why you, you know, uh, we all follow that path to, you know, before we had got this truth, man. But I'm gonna jump down to verse uh, 18. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, kind of. Yo, yeah, it's like your perspective as touching uh, uh, success, you know, or being well off, it was based upon the standards that Esau set up. It was fucking deep to hear. He did it too. I'm gonna jump down to verse uh, 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High. Then understood I their end. So just going back. You know, like you said, it's, it's the grass is green on the other side. It's right. something beyond America. We can actually read the scriptures about America being destroyed and the next chapter over, the king, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's just a, uh, that necessary evil when you read 2nd Ezra 4th chapter. Right. That, you know, that, that evil place that was sown, but ultimately the fate was, was destruction, man. But this place had to come first, so, um, and, and be destroyed so the place of song with good can come, man. But just going back, the Lord gave us this truth to see past America, you know, see past the darkness, that light, you know, which is prophecy, the testimony of Yahweh Shah. We see the end of America. Yep, and just to add to what you were saying, that's that necessary evil. Mm -hmm. Scripture come to mind, I believe it's Jeremiah uh, 33. Let me see something real quick. Uh, Yep, Jeremiah 33 and 1. This is Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison. See, while he was shut up in the court of the prison. But right, it's a, over, a spiritual overtone to that, man. All right? The word of the Lord came to him while he was in his lowest, or oh, what that goes into uh, Psalm, uh, what's that Psalm 1, not, not 119, uh, 105, goes into Joseph. Oh yeah, come 105, yep. Oh, yeah. Psalm 105. Right, Psalm 105. And when you read also in Psalm 85, I want to say, uh, it goes into uh, how Joseph's story was for a testimony. Is that, is that Psalm? Yeah. 
what is that, uh, Matthew's 11 chapter? If I'm not mistaken, Matthew's 11. And how was shot asked the disciples, who is, the, who is, who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called the child, is that it? And he called the child, and so, you know. Right, right. The child will be considered as a fool. He don't know nothing. He's going to be that sponge. You got to teach him everything. He the one going to be the wisest one. <laughs> That's when you pick up most of the things you know. Like from, uh, I think that uh, from the age of, what is it, three or something like that. To a certain age, that's when you learn really the basics of everything, you know. Everything else is just a lecture. Like geometry, all that shit, that really don't have too much of a bearing on your feet. Like, you know, like math, yeah. Maybe geometry, you know, certain things, you know. Yeah, depending on the job. But for the most part, your reasoning, you know, learning how to reason, operate, that's picked up, you know, young, young. Yeah, that, you can't deal with a guy like that. And that's what these different camps, they flag up a guy. Hey, brother, hey, brother, turn it down, son. <laughs> a little bit more. You know you're an Israelite? Man, fuck all that, man. We're in a time where the Lord is about to release Esau. Leviathan. Uh, scripture speaks about yeah, Esau Leviathan too. Go ahead, uh, 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 go ahead. Yeah, finish it, finish it. Release the crackling. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like you say, you can't deal with a guy like that. Like you say, he been at the bar too long. Right? Too feel he too filled up. He been influenced by this world, man. He think he know motherfucking more than you. You bring a scripture to him, he can't break it down. But, but he know more than you. That's why the scripture tell you. First Corinthians 3 and 18, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, right? Let him become a fool that he may be wise. Right, right. you become a student. You take on the seat of a student, you become a fool. Hey, because it tells you that in Ecclesiastes, Sirach, the fourth, I think that's the fourth chapter, mm -hmm. bow down thine ear to the poor. So that means you become one who who's inquiring of the Lord. And at that point, you're at the mercy of someone else. You guys lost sight of that, man. As if you had it the whole time. And that clouds, you know, your judgment. And even when you obeyed, right, in the physical sense, somebody else, you knew nothing about eating cereal with a spoon. The only way you knew about it was somebody before your ass was doing it. So that's why the scriptures emphasize the coming as the babe. Because it, it, it symbolizes what? No strength in your hand. You're willing to be taught because the babe is a sponge. But ultimately, you're following suit. You're following what was laid out before you, man. You know how to go to the restaurant, you know how to eat, you know how to do things because of the foundation. So we had to be recentered here in this lifetime. And I'm going to say something. The doors is closing, man. In fact, we out here waiting on to see some guy who believe he's going to come in. No, man. You'll do good, right, if, if you come up with the doctrine of Great Millstone. You know, you already come up in that spirit. You know, versus us. And that's what these guys want to have you think. Like, we waiting on a bunch of niggas to wake up. We're going to be a dead nigga come across a video. Niggas had YouTube all the time, man. But one day a nigga with a square going, he going to stop and, and plug that motherfucker, you know, plug it out and, and consider you how about you now and Man, that's what carnality coming in. You got these guys beginning to struggle with the spirit now. The flesh and the spirit struggling. Guys talking about numbers. It, it's not even this many members in Great Mill. See that because you operate under the flesh. That's a snare of you how about you now and Oh, it's like, come done. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, let's go, yeah. That's predestination. Because you can't join unless you're a part of it. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just going back, like you said, being uh, 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 so hasty to gather the people in, it's pretty you say it. Uh, late, no hands, uh, yeah. suddenly, no man. hands on no man. But uh, even John the Baptist, he went, uh, matter of fact, I'm just going to get it. Just to prove that. He ain't a college, like you say, all the time, you know, uh, he ain't a college for all black people. We ain't waiting on the masses. Because really, when you look at this thing, this thing is not about the masses, man. Right? That's why you got a one-third and you got a two-thirds, man. A 
Yeah. 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 Kind of, kind of, I say, like you said, when all black people get together, what happens? The result of a shootout, you know, somebody arguing or some shit. So that lets you know this is the spirit behind Yahweh Shah, man. Like the scripture said, we got to be gathered by the word, yeah. you know? So that means Yahweh Shah himself has hand picked the spirits that's able to come into the world. You can't just say, oh, that's a jake right there, you know? Hey, brother! Fuck out of here, man. He got you on too, man. Well, God, this is from the same Matthew 3. Vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. So to go a generation of vipers. So that lets you know that's what most of this generation is. Like just going back, like what the brother said. You have the two thirds and the one third. So that, that's like the generation of this. This you know that's why a destruction is going to take place, man. You know, all them ones that, that was in the wilderness with Moses. Because really they, they thought they was bucking up against Moses. No, you was bucking up against your Alba Shim will. Right? And you, and you didn't know it. Right? Why? Because you was coming back in your lot, man. But like the brother saying, them same ones that came back in their lot right now to buck up. Two thirds, man. And a lot of motherfuckers in the truth think they're in the truth, but they're not. I got something real good. Okay. It's St. John chapter 3 and verse 3. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And Yahweh Shai was bringing it plain, man. You got to be retaught. You can't come into this truth with the, the same doctrine of the world, man. Yeah. It says, Nicodemus. Hey, hey real quick, like, because that's why the scriptures say, man, you know, uh, you got to become a fool to be made wise. You know, meaning what? Everything that you thought you knew of the world, and maybe and you you probably, you know, was on a level in the world. But once you come into the, the, the truth, right, that eradicates everything that you thought you knew. Because everything that you thought you knew of the world, when you think about it, if it's of the world, it is not of the scriptures. It's country, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's anti-scriptural. That's that becoming a new man. That's that throwing up everything that the world taught you and becoming a babe. You know? It says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? <laughs> Nicodemus didn't understand the spiritual aspect that Yahweh, and that's what Yahweh Shad did, man. He used a, 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 a tangible example to explain a spiritual point. We all know what he was telling Nicodemus, but Nicodemus didn't understand it. Nicodemus thought you had to go back up in your mother's womb again and come back out. I mean, what Yahweh Shad was talking about, man. It was going over there, going over his head, man. And, and this was this was a learned man right here. You got it up. Huh? Huh, you, know you got it. And, it, it. and it's more highlighted now because we can't go back into our mother's womb. We got to be retaught in the mind. Mm -hmm. It says, can he enter the second See? time into his mother's womb See? and be born? Yahweh Shah answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the spirit. See, that inner man got to be cleaned up. It says, of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of the most high. So you gotta be re 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 retooled, man, you know, by this word. What is that, uh, St. John 15? Yeah. St. John 15 and 3, if I'm not mistaken, 3. Yeah. It's uh, St. John chapter 15 and verse 3. Now ye Start are- right there. It's saying yeah. now, meaning it was a time before. So now, go ahead. Ye are clean. Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken through unto thee. Through the word that I have spoken unto thee. That's that water, man. Right? That's that that's that cleansing agent, man, that the most I have allowed his prophets to bring forth to bring his people back. Get um Ephesians 5. You already know, you know what I want. This is Ephesians chapter 5 and uh verse 26. It says that he might sanctify, Start up. it says, 
verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Hamashiach also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So that's that's the way you're going to be cleansed, man. By washing of water, which is what the word, man. Meaning what? When you thought that you was, uh, 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 Whatever, whatever that by word and, and, and uh, 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 that by word that Esau put on you, when you thought you was this this sect of, 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 of people, such as a so-called Negro, a so-called Gad, so-called Native American, so-called Latino, North American, should I say, so like yeah. Guatemalan, so Mexican, Guatemalan, Puerto Rican. You wasn't there, the water. Huh? You wasn't there, right? That was that filth. That was that impurity, man. But once you learned this word, it cleans your it cleans your mind. That's why Romans what twelve and two. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind? You got it. Huh? Uh, it says that he may present. Oh, you got it. Okay, come on. It says. That he may present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such yeah, thing. Yeah, like the brother said, it starts with your mind, your reasoning, man. Because you operate according to your thoughts, all right? That's why everybody has a head. And under the head, the body operates, all right? The, the, the jails, prisons, the tax, the guys who made certain decisions that led them there, right? Yeah. But on the flip side, you have witty inventions and sex. And that also started with a thought. It all started with a spark. So this is where the focus is, OK? It's to retool us and recenter our minds and to cleanse our reasoning. And that comes with uh, blotting out everything that we might have held fast to or we show reverence to, man. Like we mentioned, holidays, you got some people out there that's not willing to fully commit to your how about some outside is based upon uh, family, you know, a job or status. See? So that's why it all starts right here. I got two Oh, uh, yeah, so you get real This is the book of Sick of Answers 14. And um, in verse 34, therefore, if it be so that you will subdue your own understanding. Right. Yep, your own understanding, it must be subdued, it must be put in check. You must be willing to yield and hearken to the authority that your house by some house size laid out, which is brought forth courtesy of uh, these teachings. That's the battle right there. That's really the flesh. When you come up against what the scriptures say and have their wealth, that's why the scripture speaks about that carnal mind. The Lord has imitated the with the carnal mind. Right. It says, therefore, if it be so, that you will subdue your own understanding. And, and, not towards your own understanding but. and reform your hearts. He shall be kept alive. And after death, you shall obtain mercy. See that? So you reform your heart. You let the Lord shape and fashion your reason, your outlook on things. And it's bigger than you. That's why I say, uh, uh, subdue your own thoughts. All right? You have to come to the conclusion that you are nothing more than a vessel. You are nothing more than clay in the hand of the potter. So you got to uh, be in subjection, always. And that's where you get the resistance. Trust me, a nigga that pop up from just a grinding nigga with a black and mild stitch of a what? To a nigga that went to Bethune cooking, right? The friction that comes with the resistance that comes with that encounter. Real talk, bro. It could be like an organized debate with a channel to, to just some ground a nigga pop up. The, the source behind that resistance, right, is their unwillingness to subdue their own mind, their own will, their own thoughts. Yeah, 
you don't even feel. Yeah, like Jake right. just trying to get the fuck on, you know? Yeah. Really, really bands and bands. Yeah, there's no bands in that hand. That's why you see these devils, they willing to play with a bear. They literally, you know what I'm saying, poke a bear. Now you show, it's, they show you in these movies. It's a fucking, you hear a sound in the garage. Like a, a motherfucking werewolf lets off a sound, rah, in the garage. And Esau wanna say, what's that? Who's that? <laughs> Fuck them, man. That's like an experience. They know their damn power. That just scared me. That's what I'm gonna do. Who's that? Yeah, fun fact. Let's get out of there. <laughs> this is uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right, by the renewing of your mind. This again goes into, oh, how is that feet accomplished? God brought it out. St. John 15. God brought that out, right? Clean, you're not clean through the word. So those blocks and stains, they rest in your mind. That's why it's hard for you to uh, convert your cousin because there's blocks and stains there that's not, he's not willing to be cleansed of. The only way you can do it is through the scripture. Well, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Right, read that one more time. Huh? Huh. It says, oh, yeah, huh? it says, and be not try Conform to this world, yep, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good right. and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Right, and perfect will of the Most High. Because you actually have people out there, right, who might claim to build a foundation of the Holy Scriptures, and they understand somewhat the will of Yahweh Samuel Shah as it relates to context. Case in point. You was to ask a certain person saying in the Bible, what was the will of the Lord in the time of Noah? Well, they can come to the conclusion, well, the will of the Lord was to flood the earth. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I feel like you have Noah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or in the time of Moses, what was the will of the Lord? Well, it was least the children of Israel. But if you were to ask them, what's the perfect will? Matter of fact, look at that word perfect. Kind. That word perfect, Strong's G. 50, 46. Yeah, because you got these junior pastors. You know what I'm saying? They know some shit. <laughs> but they don't know the will. They don't have a, that unction from Yahweh's They can't expound on, you know, the world's trouble, the current events that's taking place on the planet Earth. They can't make sense of the potential of blackouts, famine. So they don't know the perfect will of Yahweh about you now son. Well, it says, uh, brought, let me read, strong G 5046, brought to his end. Brought to his end. It's over with now. <laughs> it's time for it. It's over. So again, go ahead. It says, Broke to his end. Right, so when the scripture speaks about the perfect will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, it's speaking about the will of the Heavenly Father as it relates to the end. To the end. Because you can easily, you know, develop, you know, certain study habits, cross-reference dates, and you can come up with, with the will of the Lord as it related to, you know, certain empires and regimes. But do you understand the perfect will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai? As touching being brought to his end. See, go ahead. It says, finished. Right, finished. Hmm. Yeah, that word finished is synonymous with Esau. And I think we read that already, 2nd Ezra 6 chapter. Where that word end is in the same breath with Esau. Not just that, plenty of scripture. 1 Corinthians uh, the 15th chapter. Yeah. Acts, the first chapter, the uttermost parts of the earth. That's speaking about uh, the so-called white man's influence and how it had been the same breath with the end, man. Go ahead. Uh, this is St. John chapter, uh, first John chapter two and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Mm -hmm. If any man love the world, 
the love of the Father is not in him. Right, and that love of the Father is his truth. Hey, which it translates to prophecy. Hey, if you really had the spirit of prophecy in you, then you wouldn't love the world. Again. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And again, the love of the Father is capsulized in the form of prophecy. Right? So, if you love the world, if you have a soft spot, if there's sentimental value in this world, then, you know, by now, you should get rid of it. Now, not to say that that's not going to be the case. You know, when you first come in, remember, this is a work in progress. Hey, because even when you consider the erecting of buildings, it don't just pop up overnight. It's a process. But the Lord gave us a time of grace where ultimately we are to detach from this world and become, matter of fact, give me that, uh, stay on him. I said stay upon the Holy Land of Israel. You know, this is the time where you are to detach from this world and become more, um, and pretty much draw back to your power. All right? So yeah, you know, when you first come into this thing, you know, there's certain things you have to wing from. Scripture say, who, who you have to wing, you know, the Lord wing you off of things. But ultimately, hey, as we approach the return of Yahweh Shaft, everybody should be rested and settled in the scripture, which goes into uh, being rooted and grounded in the Lord. If you waver right now, then, uh, then ultimately you're not a part of that number. We can say that, man, because you should be convinced all right, you should be persuaded that this is it. All right, come on. I can say on two yeah, go, go. We had did a lesson on this, and that word world goes into, you know, your family. Right, yeah, you exactly. Said that's, that's that bridge that you have to with the, the world. world. Yeah, yeah. So, that's right, bro. You got to you gotta, you gotta put those things off, man. And, and like the elder brother said, it's a process. It's not going to happen instantly. But as you grow more in this truth, you know, you, you see that they they going to eventually become your enemy, man. Because they don't have this doctrine, they don't have this understanding. Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be really for you in, in your best interest to come out of the world, the tents of family. Because, hey, look, pro uh, prophecy is about to have that up, up close and personal moment. You know, everybody is going to be tested. And the scriptures tell you that in uh, what's that, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. You know? Uh, yep, so come on. Good. Uh, verse 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. Right, yeah, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, which is captured in the form of social media, really. You know, this is the hype. You know, because you have to, when you get a report, right, when you're briefed on something, there's a point where you got to see it unfold. You know, when something is projected as, as prophecy is, Hey, just like with Noah, he was brief. He, he, he proceeded with the ministry, a hundred and so odd years, 120 years worth. But then eventually he saw the rain. You see that? So we see that lust of the eyes now. That makes sense now more so more than ever. As you see people on Instagram and uh, what's these different sites? Uh, TikTok. TikTok. Hey, even if you ever notice, right, when motherfuckers doing something for the community, you ever saw the ones where they ask somebody for a dollar and they, if they give them a dollar and they say, yeah, well, I got something for you. Well, why you got it on camera? You know? Because that's, you know, the lust of the eye. You know? Go ahead. It says, at the pride and of life. And not to mention, like I said, Facebook and shit. If you, your profile picture, you got to stunt. The lust of the flesh, you're not going to take a lowly, you know, they got you in the room and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just got the white tee on with the collar stretched out and you in the back room and shit. That shit ain't going to fly in this world. <laughs> That's not going to fly in this world, see? Yeah. Hey, you got to stop. So that, the scriptures are spot on. The scriptures are that's an accurate assessment of how Babylon would be operating. 
under the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. Well, and the pride of life. See, and the pride of life. Everything is driven by the pride of life. You know, I'm living. I'm living it up. That's why all the all the people pictures is a smile on their face. Really, that's pride. You know, you should be in a lowly. Real quick, that's why a lot can't come to Yahweh Shah. What is that, Luke 14, 26? Yahweh Shah say, even your life also. Right, yeah, yeah. Whoa. So you got to give that up, man. You know, give up being comfortable, you know, think you look good, you're, you're in great health. You know, you got to really give all that up, man. That's like a, what you say, spiritual trade off, man. Or be ready to. Or be ready to if it comes your way. Right. right. Ready for it because you know that this world right here is temple. Exactly. Like you put your stock into a world that's falling. Like it don't make sense. Your standards, you measure your standards up against a world that's corrupt. Like you got a nigga in the mirror and he's measuring his standards to look ooze and birth. You see what I'm saying? But once you come into this truth, you understand that this is the lowest. The worst case scenario, and there's a world beyond this. Real quick. Uh, me and the brother was, uh, was talking on camera, man. It's, it's nothing perpetual in this world, man. Nothing. I don't give you, you buy a car, a house, your shoe. It's going to get old. And then it's going to wither away. But there's only one thing that's perpetual, man. And that's the kingdom of heaven. That's the only thing that's going to be perpetual, man gonna last forever. It's nothing that you can tell me. It's gonna last forever, man. You got it up. Yeah, like, you know, you have to get a brand new car eventually, you need a new one. That's it. That's it. Because it's not, it's not, it's not perpetual. That's true. Buy a new, but eventually it'll get old. Now you got brakes. That's you gotta get new one. That's so, that's the vibration of Esau. Which is all that shadow, that temple. Yep. Matter of fact, yep. what's that? I, I want to say that. Is that Job um, 8? Is it Job 7 or Job 8? The days of. Uh, I think it's Job 8 and 1. Yeah. Yeah, Esau's whole state, his whole being is temple, as we often speak on, man. Uh, well, uh, yeah, because 1 John 2 and 17. It says, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the most high abide forever. Hey, that's what we that's what we fight for. Forever. That's that's it. Yeah. We fight for forever, man. Because we have been given a glimpse into forever, into immortality. That's, uh, what's that? Uh, uh, it's about the 19th chapter, man. See, once once you are introduced to this form of teaching, by default, you are given a look into immortality. All right? Life eternal. And that can be proven by reading, uh, what's that? St. John, the 6th chapter? Where Peter made the statement, Lord, thou hast the words of eternal life. With so we go. Uh, with shall we go. Uh, yeah, that was really the book of Job, Psalm 1. Is there not an appointed? Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Right. Read that again. Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Right. So, with the naked eye, one might read this, and they'll apply it to just you know the physical individual who come on the earth and they have a point in time, they have a born day, they have a death day, which that does apply. But remember, we operate under the spirit. Okay, so we read in this through spiritual lenses. Furthermore, when you go into, when you tap into the testimony of Yahweh Shah, it promotes dominion and rulership, man. See? So, in actuality, this is going into different nations who had a time to rule. And in particular, Esau.
the top. Really the top. He said, is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Right, so spiritually, right, when you read this scripture through spiritual lenses, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you understand that this is going into the testimony of Yahweh Shai, man, as it relates to rulership and those who occupy the power seat. There are certain, uh, a certain time you get, you're given a rule. Go ahead. It says, are not his days also like the days of an hireling? See, it's not his days also as the days of an hireling. So, as we apply it to this lifetime, which makes sense, all right, all it takes is the same day, man. And hey, cool. Hey, because uh, uh, scriptures say for Edom, uh, what does it say? Uh, hey, hey, man, I've been thinking. Yeah, let me yeah, think. Yeah, let me think. I've been thinking about it. Every time you say that, that's what I've been thinking about. Right. Uh, go ahead. Because really, uh, when you go into what? With the Malachi, the fourth chapter, it says, uh, those that do wickedly, that falls in line with the uh, Lamentation, the fourth chapter. Right. When it says, uh, rejoice and be glad, O, o daughter of, o, of Edom. Right? Because Jake is conformed to the daughter of Edom, man. So you rejoice and be glad too, because your fucking day coming, man. Right. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, true, man. Yeah. Well, huh? Yeah, 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 that's it, huh? That's, 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 that's it, that's it, huh? That's it, huh? That's it, huh? They celebrate that's these different uh, holidays. That's it. You know, they do these certain uh, pastimes. Yep, that's, uh, that's like yeah, it. Just add, hold your thought. Mm. That's Isaiah 13, chapter. Yeah, Akai, that's it. Yep. Whosoever is joined unto them, he'll be thrust, thrust, thrust. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's it. Like, just going with what you say, like, like the spirit brings us, you know. Yeah, they permanent Americans, man. Yeah, like you said, they, they, they you, you know who they root for. You know what side they on, because right. why? The uniform that they wear, you see their actions. You know? Well, on, on the perform other. Perform to this world. Perform to this world. On the other hand, we're not slaves to this world. We're slaves to hope, which is being slaved to Yahweh Shah, man. What's that? Well, let's eat. Go ahead, but go ahead. Go oh, ahead. yeah, yeah. While he's getting there, uh, just to add to y'all point, even Habakkuk, the second chapter, promotes uh, uh, that idea. Where it says, if the soul lifted up in him is not upright. Yep. Now we know ultimately that's dealing with Esau, but that deals with all of you out there who don't live by faith. Remember, the scriptures say, but the just will live by faith. <laughs> All right, so we will be driven by the testimony of Yahweh Shai and his belief system mm -hmm. versus the world. See, everybody outside of this truth, you're proud. Because certainly if you're not subscribing to this form of teaching, then that means you got your own exit plan. That's why you see, you know, these people out here, even amongst our own, right? They are in the spirit of mirth, right? Well, the scriptures encourage them to do that because this is the last hurrah for you, man. Alright, come on, you got something? Okay, this is uh first second Corinthians chapter four and verse eighteen. It says, Why we look not at the things which are seen. Right. So our our outlook on things doesn't center around the things that seen. Alright? As touching this current system. And everything that the so-called white man has to offer. Now, do we have to coexist with this world? You're damn right. And that's why you have a lot of people that become offended. They might come into your circle or they get a closer glimpse of you and they see that, you know, we in the flesh just like them. Yeah. Right? We had to go to work. There it is. You, you came into the arena expecting to see us in a cave. You know what I'm saying? Floating on a rug. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fire kindle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And tripod, yeah, and tripods in that motherfucker too, though. Yeah. The lie. <laughs> no, we're in the world. What I mean by we, we are in this kingdom as well. Hey, and we have to be here in order for us to fulfill prophecy. Because according to the story, the Lord is going to deliver us from Babylon. Uh, give me that real quick. Michael. Give me that Michael, the fourth chapter. Now the reason why I want to get that because I know what scriptures that should come to everybody's mind in St. John the 17th chapter. Well, Yahweh Shai in his prayer. That's, that's, that's what I'm thinking right, right now. Yeah. Says, I'm I'm I pray right that you now. take them not out of the way. St. John 17. So the Lord placed us pretty much in the midst of the furnace so his power can be shown. That's all. Okay? In order for the Lord's power to be shown, we have to be in a situation 
But we need that assistance. We need that comfort, relief, and ultimately deliverance. That's why your house is known as the deliverer. Deliverer of who? The elect. From what? See, these are the dots you have to connect. So we got to be here. Go ahead, huh? This is go, go ahead, get that real. Uh, uh, start at 14. St. John 17 and 14. I have given them. Oh, that is the difference. This is the book of Michael chapter 4 oh, yeah, yeah. in verse 10. He in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, mm -hmm. like a woman in travail, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Right, so the Lord declared that we would go forth out of the city. What does the scripture mean when it says now we would go forth out of the city? I mean, we would be driven and scattered into the four winds. All right? We would be removed from our land. Go ahead. And thou shalt dwell in the field. Right, and we would dwell in the field. Okay? The field is the world. All right? Oh, okay. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry, y'all. Israel? Yeah, sing more, man. Sing more. Yeah, we Israelite. Which one do you say you from? Okay, yep, I see it, I see it, yep, I see it, yep. Yeah. So you follow the uh, testimony of your house side, you, you what? Yep, uh, you so, yep, go ahead. I didn't know there was a like Yeah, yeah, kind, yep, we got some brothers, a couple of blocks down too. Yeah, yep. station like, like, Well, we just basically meet up out on the street. Yeah? Yeah. Certain days, certain times, like Yeah, on Saturdays. We come out here on Saturdays from, uh, I say around 3 o'clock to like 5, we'll be out a couple of hours. Okay, okay. But we actually have YouTube channels where it's more intimate setting. Really? Where you what, get your scripts channel? broken down. Uh, brother, give you a couple of the links. Yeah, I got, I'm, I'm from New York, try. Okay, come. Then I said we're local, but okay. we hear nothing about it over here. Okay, come, come. Is it a particular uh, group you follow? Like, you heard a great meal song? Okay. Yeah, so where are uh, groups you, you teach, you learn on? Well, it's 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 a particular Yashua, group? It's a Yashua. It's a Yashua? Okay, yeah, cut. Yeah, Yashua group out of New York. It's one of the UK. Oh, okay, okay, cut. Same thing, but you know, we just separate. We do it. We right, right. Inside. That's that's pretty we much one way. You know that, that's right, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, everything is branched out now. Right, so right. So the spirit got the spirit, the momentum of the truth going out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. So that's what we witnessed in the extension. But well, we were going into the early, the body of your house. Y'all try to do it? Yeah, 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 um, uh, it's mixed. Mixed? Yeah, uh huh. Well, yeah. Nice to meet y'all. Hey, nice to meet you too. You, you in a hurry? You gotta go? No, I don't. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, we just out here breaking the scriptures down, bro. You know what okay, I'm I would like to hear you, sir. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure you, you were hip to uh, the faith of America. You understand where that, that links into the Bible, right? The faith, the destiny of America. Okay. So I'm pretty sure you should know right now we're in heavy time. The, uh, the Lord is about to shut this system down, you know, in an act of justice, okay, to visit Esau, the so-called white man. But you know the so-called white man is the offender. Right, the nation of Edom. Yeah, so we're in a time now where the Lord is about to exact vengeance. The Lord is about to proceed forth with the judgments written, okay? There's going to be a famine out here in America, Babylon the Great. Oh, so the scripture speaks about wet conversation, I mean, wet manner of man. Uh, give me that as well. God. Book of Michael chapter 4 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Right. Go ahead. Like a woman in So we see the overtone as it relates to the rallying cry of Israel as it pertains to these days is a call for justice, you know, to be delivered, to be relieved, to be comforted from that continual stroke of oppression, man. And we can name names, okay? This is not a random thing. No. We were, we were subdued by our enemies, Esau, the so-called white man. Yeah. So this very hearing, it serves as a symbol of that justice being established in the planet Earth, where the Lord is once more showing favor to his people, the children of Israel, okay? The true Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, not those gutter rats over there in our land, because they, 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 yeah, yeah, the imposters because their foundation is built upon leaky 1948, okay? <laughs> That's enough said. Yeah, because you had this gutter right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? Yep, yeah, go ahead. It says, 
for now shalt thou go forth out of the city, mm -hmm. and thou shalt dwell in the field. Right, so the Lord, he acted on where he swore in his vengeance to scatter us to the field. Now, what does the field represent? Let's get, the, let's get a piece up on it, Matthew 13, chapter. So the Lord said we would be driven out of the city, which represents um, Jerusalem, okay? The Lord will, will drive us out of the city and scatter us into the field. Go ahead, huh? St. Matthew 13 and 38. The field is the world. So the field is a metaphor, a dark sand for the world, man. So the Lord, he executed, as promised, his vengeance against Israel. See, our current state proves that we those people. The fact that we was driven out, we were scattered out, all right, and mainly drove over here to America for the main place of our captivity, Babylon the Great. That all goes back to building the prophets. You got something? Oh, no. All right, so let's go back. Okay. It says, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Go ahead. And thou shalt dwell in the field. So the Lord will scatter us throughout the world, but there will be a main destination for it. He says, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. Right, so according to prophecy, the Lord said we would go even to Babylon. Babylon being America, right? Which that word Babylon, the Hebrew word that would be Babal, which translates to what? Confusion. And that's what's on display in America, man, confusion. Hey, you step down on a woman, you have to really consider if it's a woman. You have to really be on your top. Is that a woman? You know? They had the, uh, one bra came out, it was a friend, it was one of them things. She, she disclosed that she, she got with, uh, Ray J. with the Ray J, yeah. Uh, Trey Song. Right. And a lot of them guys, they into it anyway, but you know, it's still, you know, you, you this is a honey house, man. Like I be telling the brothers, like, you know, it's best to just do your work and just try to get back to the house. Because it's a honey house, literally. You know, you go in a honey house with each turn, danger lurks, mother kick out the kick out of a room, a closet. The spider cogwell come down in a skeleton. That's those gas stations and shit. You gotta pass right by it because that's yeah. Babylon the Great house those demonic spirits, man. This is the wickedest place ever erected, okay? Yeah, go ahead, huh? It says, there, it's like, it says, there shalt thou be delivered. There, the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thy enemy. Right, so there, here in Babylon, the Lord said he will redeem us from the hand of our enemy, man. Okay? Being the so-called white man. We have been subdued by this devil. And even more so now because the reason why this story, we, the song that we sing don't register with most of our people is because physically they don't see the change. And that's the snare. Because you don't see that graphic vision of chains and a cross burning in your damn yard, you know? But that, that subjection is, is on display more so now in your mind, okay? You have been restricted um, from truly extending to your power and, and fully returning to your house by Shemal Shah. Uh, go ahead. Uh, don't be paying attention. Count, yeah, don't be This is 2 uh, Peter chapter 3 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Right, all these things shall be dissolved. Now, this is where uh, uh, prophecy gets a bit more intricate. Because you do have entry level Israelites. You have some amongst our people, and it's a beautiful thing, you know that you're an Israelite, but do you understand the, the details of the intents and purposes of your Yahweh and Yahweh Shah? And the fact that the Lord has sworn in his wrath to visit America, man, in an act of justice, it's going to be real crucial. We're right at the cusp of the power going out, which parallels Egypt, right? The great famine that's going to lay hold of America, Babylon the Great, is going to spawn more and more, uh, 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 insurrections, if you will, seditions, and men invading one another for the lack of bread and water. That was all written in the script. It was all scripted by your Yahweh Shemal Shah. See? Read that again. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Now, as we often go into, right, the scriptures deal with levels. Now, you can you can speak on that word dissolve in its perfection, and we know that that, that concerns the missile. We still ain't got those missile signs yet. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. 
they got to start rotating or something though, like, yeah, like, they got to start, yeah, we got one, you know what I mean? <laughs> Call for a brother to bring it down. <laughs> but uh, that dissolve in this perfection is dealing with this place America and the violent overthrow of it, man, which will be manifest in the form of World War III, which, by the way, is biblical, man. And that's a stumbling block to most people. Because when we merit modern terminology, such as America, all right, uh, the digital currency, the CBDC, the ICBM, Milton right, modern terminology, with what's perceived to be an ancient text, then that will cause one to stumble. But what you're going to find out, that the extent and influence of your how about now side can't be limited. It's timeless, man. Okay? The ancient writings pretty much details and narrates the current, this current beast system that's on display, which will be met with a violent end, World War III. So that's what the scripture means when it says that sin, all these things will be dissolved. But as I mentioned, the, the maturation, that also deals with the, 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 uh, the luxuries of this place, the normalcy, all right, having access to water and power. That's all going to be dissolved as prophecy unfolds. Read that one more time. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, yep, go ahead. what manner of persons ought ye to be? Right, so you should operate in a certain spirit. That's why most of our people, again, that even that might know that the Israelites is more of an entry-level point, and that's a beautiful thing. But you have to advance to the intimate, all right, the more uh, intricate things concerning the scripture. And once you're hip to it, right, once you brief to the Lord's plan, then by default, you operate, you walk a certain walk. There's a certain level of anticipation now. You're anticipating the family. You're not just an Israelite in America. No. You anticipate the God of the Bible, the spring and the action, as he always have done. In ancient Egypt, did, did we continue to be in Egypt? No. The Lord, you know, he, with a splash, he delivered us from that captivity. Well, that same power was alive and well, man. And the stage is set now for the Lord to spring into action once more. Yeah, so they, they're going into that uh, anticipation like the brother always go into. It's just like somebody catch you off guard with a punch or, or something forceful. Or somebody hits you off guard and you, you're not expecting it. It's going to hurt worse. It could even kill you. But if you know it's coming, you have a chance to what? Brace for it. That's like this, that's just, you know, equivalent to what the brother's talking about. And that's a beautiful point that he made. Yeah. Yeah. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2. O oh Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh I have heard thy speech and was afraid. So, hey, hearing the speech of the Lord is really when this doctrine is put on display. You know, uh, <laughs> you know that trumpet, that, that warning sound. Because the scripture says that we have a sure word of prophecy and that you will do well to take heed. So that it lets you know that this message comes with a sense of urgency, you know. So he said he had heard the speech and wasn't afraid. So that's the that really supposed to be the uh, the proper reaction, you know, when they, you know when the Lord uh, speaks by the way of the prophets. You know? And that's when you know you heard the truth. Because if you find, you know if you come into this thing and, and, and your reaction is a bubbly feeling, you know you feel good about being no. That means that you haven't been really briefed on the uh, testimony of Yahweh Shah. You know what proved that? No. As a matter of fact, get that. What's that, Hebrew? That's yeah. what you was getting? No, I mean, that, that, that's beautiful. I, I, I would get that Joel. But that, yeah, get that. Yeah, get that Hebrew real quick. Because when Noah heard the report, it provoked a certain reaction, man. That's how you know you got the truth for the Lord. And because the Lord don't compromise. If you hear this message and you was compelled to kick your feet up, you know what I'm saying? You went into this motion, then that means you didn't really get the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord provokes you to, to be driven to your feet. Uh, it tells you that in Jeremiah the 28th chapter, man, the prophets before me and before thee of old both prophesied against many countries of, of, of what? War, pestilence, and evil. That's the legacy of the prophets, man. They were barrels of bad news, so you can understand. This is Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. By faith, 
Noah being warned of the Most High. See, Noah was warned of the Most High, man. That proves that this, this current idea of how the Bible is promoted in this modern world has nothing to do with the God of the Bible and his veracity. Because again, it promotes this bubbly feeling, this holding hand, singing, right? But really, the overtone of the scriptures, again, when presented properly in its period form, it's a warning. Go ahead. It says, of things not seen as yet. Which is prophecy, go ahead. Moved with fear. So Noah was moved with fear, go ahead. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Right, so Noah began to build an ark once he heard the word of the Lord, man. Which again, is, is the overtone of it is prophecy. That's why when you truly inquire of the Lord, you got to have your, you have to have the belly to stomach it. That's why Yahweh Shai said, uh, uh, he, he that eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. The reason why the Lord gave you such a graphic illustration of that is because if you are not, you don't have the right stomach, you can't eat nobody's flesh and drink their blood. You're gonna gag it right up. So that goes into the sense of urgency of the word, the word when it's broken in its purest form, man. Unfiltered, uncut. What? It says by the wind. Right, so when Noah heard the word of the Lord, he started building the ark, man. <laughs> and that ark represents fleeing from the dangers that the Lord prepared. Yeah, go ahead, man. It says by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Right, so Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah conveyed uh, what he had intended as touch in that lifetime. And, and, and Noah was struck with fear. He was frozen with fear. Again, it provoked him to start building the ark. That's us. Give me that in uh, Genesis, the fifth chapter. Yeah, come on. Just going back with what the brother Barak said, the scripture you brought out. Like, like you said, like the other brother said, that's your natural instinct or your natural reaction when you hear a warning. Right. You know what I mean? You don't start doing jumping jacks, you know what I mean, when you hear a fire alarm. You know? You know what I'm saying? You don't start having fun. It's right, a warning right, sound. Right, right. right? You start so, licking around for yeah, the exactly. smoke. Exactly. You know, you're trying to see if there's any smoke, any signs of danger. Exactly. Book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm. See, that, the scripture that's, uh, says, uh, 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 uh. Uh, Jesus Christ. That's yeah, that's no one else. He says, and sound an alarm. See that? In my holy mountain. So I got this word alarm. And when you go to it, Strong's H7321, uh, it says, to shout. It says, raise a sound, cry out, give a blast. Here it is. It says, to shout a war cry yep. or alarm of battle. Hey, that's okay. Oh, no, you got it. No, 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 you got it. No, no, no. I, I was just gonna say, uh, I think that's Ezekiel. This, uh, uh, that they might come, uh, prepare for the battle. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah. Is that Ezekiel the yeah. same chapter? Right. Now, the, the scriptures has a play on words. You see, words dramatize things. You know. So the Lord, to make you understand the sense of urgency, He He equate. Gathering for a battle because the Lord has waged war against America, man. And pretty much what we're doing is waving a white flag. That's what we're doing. Yeah, that's just that for the demon on us, man. I, I was saying, wave the white flag. Hey, he said, he said, he said, the white people. Yeah, hey, 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 it's good, bro. But you know, I understand. Like, yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, wait, what's the parable? Is that Luke the uh, 14th chapter? Right, conditions of peace. Oh, okay, come on. Conditions of peace. Because we have been briefed that the Lord has has uh, uh, dispatched heaven's armies. Hey, uh, Ezekiel the ninth chapter already activated. The death angels out, man. That's why you hear these stories of, uh, uh, well, the, what, even the one video clip. Remember the brawl was wandering aimlessly through the street? And it was like this nerdy Edomite, he walked past him and shit. And he, he, 
knocked the ass out. You know that he drug her off camera? Go ahead. So it says, uh, it's like, uh, oh, you doing it? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, going back to the definition of uh, alarm in Joel 2 and 1, it says a shout, it says to shout, a war cry, or alarm of battle. So that's that's what we're blowing the trumpet for. When you read the book of uh, Ezekiel 3 and 17, what did what did the most high set up a watchman for? To warn he said, warn them from me. From me. Yep. So that's that that's that um that shout of, of war or a war cry. Who who is the warrior? The most high. Is what is that? Exodus 15 and 3? Right. He's a man of war. So right. What place have he he, he he's uh, waged war against mm. America? Right. But he is he's he, he's a balanced power. Before he bring destruction, he always bring a warning. And how do he bring a warning? He bring it through his, through his trumpets, through his prophets. In these times, the uh, uh, the prophets be, would be the ones that are blowing the trumpet. Right. And how do we blow the trumpet? By what? Teaching you, telling you that the Most High is about to send you Howard Shai, the rest of the angels, accompanied by the way of two hundred million missiles. To the squatters place, man. That's why that's why Noah was afraid and he acted upon it. So you got it. Going back, those are the ones that are going out parking Market. that to it. Those it. are the ones that because yep. anyone else would hear that, man. they would be like, ah, uh, you know. So like you said, the Zion are the only one that actually that's get, it. The, get the, the, the right the, 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 holy yep. the holy mountain. Yep. The holy mountain. Because they they that's that dog whistle effect. I'm just gonna say, that's what I'm just gonna say. They ain't deaf tone, you know. They ain't deaf tone. Meaning, meaning, meaning the the the, 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 the alarm, right? They can hear it. And once again, it don't sound like a carnival ride, man. And then even even within the carnival ride, what if they just couldn't hear the alarm? Period. That's why you have a shot saying, "Blessed are your ears, for they for they hear." Meaning what? You're capable of digesting this warning. And being afraid. You know how many people that are digesting this warning and not afraid? They're still planning for 10 years in America, man, by the ways that they're doing, man, subconsciously. They don't know it because the most I got them in a the trick bag. Right. They ain't taking warning, they ain't taking heed to the warning because they don't have the faculties to, to house this warning and say, hold up, danger's coming. Right. You got people that's that's hearing the alarm and like what are you talking about? They lost their sense. They can't make out. That's it. What they can't make out. They can't decipher. They can't decipher. Right? They think that it's a carnival. They think it's a game. But remember what Yahweh Shai said. And it's showing how cold Yahweh Shai is, man. The Lord framed his visitation as a thief, man. That, that puts you in a vulnerable state, you know? That's why your only form of resistance, the thief, is to be a wolf. Be alert. That's why that word alarm is there. Right in the midst of the night. In the middle of the night. Uh, yeah, in the, uh, that's when it, you, you know, that's when you're most vulnerable. Are we, are we, uh, yeah, yeah. True. Oh, that, that midnight. Yeah, that midnight. Yeah, yeah when you go into that word midnight, when you really break that word midnight down, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it goes into yeah. the middle of it, it goes into splitting. You know, in the midst of the night. So in the midst of the night, you knocked out. All your faculties is not there. So the Lord in the act of mercy says about to wake your hands up. Hey, the Lord coming, man. The Lord coming. I'll tell you that in Matthew, um, the 25th chapter, right? Well, um, the, there was a cry made, the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. You know what that's equivalent to? Oh, uh, danger coming, man. Hey, because certain Christians will read that and get bubbly. No, that bridegroom coming means danger coming. And the Lord in the act of mercy woke your ass up. You were knocked out. The Lord sent the message up. He hit you over the face. Slap you and wake you up. He said, the Lord coming, man. Get up. It's time to get up. And that happens in the middle of the night. That's the most ideal time. Yep, come on. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 5. It says, whoso keep a the commandment shall feel no evil thing. Right, yeah, where'd you read from? Uh, Jesus, okay. All right, go ahead, read that again. It says, whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. Right, and you notice that commandment there is, is singular. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to keep the commandment? 
That means to hold fast to Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is the commandment, man. All right? Meaning, matter of fact, let's prove that. Give me uh, uh, Proverbs. I think that's Proverbs. Um, is it 19? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the scripture says, Whoso keep the commandment. Right? Read that again. It says, Whoso keep the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And we know that word evil goes until a certain time. That word evil goes hand in hand with a certain, a particular season that the scripture speaks about, man. That's the time of trouble, all right? Let's read about it in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. That's the evil, go ahead. And a wise man's heart, the son of both time and judgment. Hey, like even we was, uh, you know, speaking with the brother, you know, um, you know we was expounding on the, the, the more in-depth aspects of knowing that you're an Israelite. And the sense of urgency that comes with it. And see, you have to be introduced to a particular doctrine. There's plenty of guys that tell you in like, hey, shalom, brother. You know what I'm saying? But are they warning you from, uh, is they fulfilling Ezekiel the third chapter? Are they warning you of your how about you now? So that's why the scripture says, a wise man discerning both time and judgment. That means he's truly been introduced to wisdom. He truly get it. He's been exposed to the doctrine. So if that applies to you, then now you you consider in time and judgment. But read the beginning of it again. Okay. It says, whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. Right, so that means you have to abide, you have to hold fast to Yahweh Shai. That's Yahweh Shai is the commandment in a, overall. Matter of fact, let's prove that. Go ahead. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 16. He that keepeth the commandment. There I go again, singular. He that keepeth the commandment. Go ahead. Keep with his own soul. Right. That this is what preserves you. Go ahead. But he that despises his ways. Despises who ways? The commandment. Go ahead. Shall die. See? That's it. That's it. Yeah, so yeah, it's critical to subscribe to Yahweh Shah. Now somebody might ask, how? How do I subscribe to this Yahweh Shah? How do I keep this commandment to assure that I won't succumb to, to the judgments that the Lord has prepared? Well, we'll give it to you simple. Subscribe to this information and believe on it. Matter of fact, get that in St. John the 6th chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you got? That's the spirit. Book of St. John chapter 6, verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of the Most High? Right, so if you sincere and you truly inquire of the God of the Bible, then this should apply to you too as well. You should earnestly desire to do the things that's pleasing to your power, right? Well, the scripture don't give you the answer. Go ahead. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, This is the work of the Most High. Right. Go ahead. That ye believe on him Woo. whom he have sent. See, that's the work of the Most High, to believe on him whom he have sent. Okay? So that's the report, which again details a, a very disturbing future for America, Babylon the Great. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. Commandment, you know, uh, yeah, the DJ that likes to talk about the law, uh, the law, the law, the law, but hey, it's a law of faith, yes, you yep. know, it's a, it's a commandment to believe in your house by Shemel Shai, it's getting presented by the way of the teaching, you know, yeah, it's a mandatory fast, like the devil told me. This is a uh, it's, it's commanded of you not to take the Quran. But ultimately, in the question we pose, like if you said, keep the commandment, well, we ask you, what's the commandment? You know, what's the commandment you're, you're encouraged to keep and hold fast? That's, uh, that's a symbol of Yahweh Shai, man. Seeing that he's the deliverer. That's why in the same breath, it says, this is what assures your life. If you hold fast to the commandment, you said one who holds, or one who keeps the commandment possesses his own life. It tells you that in Proverbs 8 chapter. You finna get that? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It's Proverbs chapter 8 and verse. Hey, see, everything comes back around full circle to Yahweh Shah, man. Straight up. That's what we introduce unto you, Yahweh Shah. And it's in the form of the doctrine. That's why the Lord is known as the Word. So we're in good company, bro. If you're in this hearing, you believe, you sincerely believe in this. Okay, you're willing to sacrifice, right, for Yahweh Shah. Then 
then that means that you uh, pretty much hold fast to the commandment. You have been hedged. But now there's a clause in the contract. Scripture say, let him not return to his own body. So when you come into this thing, you can't just uh, endure for a season. No, you have to endure to the end as it is written. Go ahead, up. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 33. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that hear of me mm -hmm. watching daily at my gates. Right, that's dealing with Yahweh's son, man. Blessed is the man that hear Yahweh's son. All right, now when you go into that word here, matter of fact, click on that word, up. The word here, Scrolls H8085, it says to hear, to listen, obey. Right, to obey. Oh, that goes into the law. Obey his voice. Right? <laughs> Go ahead. It says to listen with attention. Right, to be attentive. Hey, because mm -hmm. once you get this word, you can't treat it as if, oh, you know, there's a saying, the bus, the woman is like the bus. I know you heard that saying, the woman. When did one come in with yeah, 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 yeah. That don't apply to this woman, man. She's very elusive. Wisdom, we speaking about here. So when you come across it, you have to hold fast to it. Go ahead. That's why I say pretty much you have to be attentive. Go ahead. It says, or interest, it says to understand. To what? To understand. So when the Lord said, blessed is he who will hear my words, that translates to blessed to all those who understand. Okay? And even the setting, right? The backdrop of the camp, you have the privilege to come and descend it upon a camp. If you ain't in the right spirit, the missile sign is enough to throw you off. You have to understand what's going on here, man. There's not just a show of black, so-called black men together. You know, that's been going on for years. Or like them guys, uh, which he was a, he was a plant, um, with the guy, uh, you know who shot himself, one of his, one of his guys shot himself? Uh, Grand Master Grand Master James. Flash. Yeah, because that's what he was, he was a flash. <laughs> but what happened? They had this show of power. They had the Catons that were marching. And the guy shot himself. And they had to scramble and call Esau, the so-called white man uh, ambulance. Yeah, it is. They, they stand, you know, like they're a symbol of defiance against the so-called white man. The guy shot himself, and they was left scrambling to call Esau Evelyn. Esau had to come pick him up and treat him. So, you know, our people, they don't understand what this is about. This is not a, a show of force or empowerment for the so-called black man. No, this is the, uh, let, let, get this up there. Too big up. Yeah, this is a, this is a, 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 a introduction to your house shop. Okay, which serves as a symbol of a transition of power. Right? Meaning what? The so-called white man's days are numbered, and his throne, which is America, Babylon the Great, is to be overthrown as prophesied. That's what we represent up here, man. But you got to have the faculties to understand. You know be able to dance to that song. Go ahead. Huh. It says, for whoso find of me, find of life. Right. So whoso find of the Lord, find of life. <laughs> and shall obtain favor of the Lord. See, and shall obtain favor of the Lord, man. And that proves that Solomon, when you go into the in-depthness of the scripture, right? for those who have ears, that's your house shot because, uh, that, that sentiment was echoed when Yahweh Shai made the statement, I am the way, I am the life. No man coming to the Father save through me. That's pretty much what Solomon's saying. But what's overall being conveyed, you have to go through Yahweh Shai's door to receive the favor of the Lord, which is going to be needed, man. When the famine, when the Lord opened up out here, man, when the famine settled in, the only one that's going to be preserved is those who are kept by Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. Scripture speaks about running into that tower. They gonna get crazy out here. The power gonna be out. Bats and shit. And these independent women, 
They're going to be ravaged. Yeah. They got to go. Brother, the Lord got spirits on standby. Wait. They got that, brother, that, brother. Brother, under explicit orders. They got to go. They got, I said, they got to go. See that? That's the spirit of the Lord, bro. Hey, because these women, they serve as a symbol of the dysfunction of Esau, the so-called white men. Hey, because according to the ordinance of your Bash and Yahweh Shah, men is, is the authority, man. Okay? Men were set up over households. But you have women out in the streets, parading around in the streets. At any given time in one of these major cities, you see a, a gang of women with high heel shoes, drunk, leaving from a damn happy hour to some dark alley. Not understanding the dangers, the potential dangers that lie. Well, guess what? Matter of fact, get that in uh, Ezekiel the ninth chapter real quick. It's everything, everything that was a symbol of the strength of America, which was a token of everything that was, that shit was off, man. And we're in a time where the Lord is bringing everything back into his natural order, man. The natural order of things. All right, come on. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that signed that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the Hey, that place, that's at the scene of the crime. Because this is a form of sighing and crying. When you come into this hearing, you're going to hear a lot of complaining. And because, uh, what's that, the parable of the, the fortunate widow? She was making a complaint to Yahweh by Shema Shah. This is a courtroom set. We complaining about the injustice of Esau, all right, the wickedness, the perverseness here. This nigga put a, he stressed, he put an emphasis on pork. So we complaining against the, uh, uh, powers of, that be. Yeah, the offenses of the powers that be. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. This is the book of Lamentations 2 and 18. They heart, their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion. Mm -hmm. Let the tears run down like a river. Right. And those tears represent really these videos, this le these lessons going on. That's a metaphor for this truth going forth. That's why Yahweh Shah made the statement uh, in St. John the 7th chapter uh, that this truth is like living waters. Oh, oh, yeah. He, like, he want to kid, he, like he's gonna kidnap or either burglarize somebody. You got a crowd of these people, man. Right, yeah. That, 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 was, that was a crowd. Me personally, I'd have been running to try to get out of the way, man. Right, man, right. I had the right of way for real. It's like green. Yeah, this place completely out of order, man. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look up, brother. Yeah, you had to know how to discern. Yeah. Yeah, because you know what? Even when you seek, you have to really research on what's the remedy. Right. Man. You have to seek out and, and discern and distinguish, you know, what's good for you or whatnot. Right. 
So that's the pursuit to understanding and the clarity. Yeah, which is really comfortable. When you get this information, man, when you know things, you're comforted. You see? That's what's on display. The Lord is not comforting. You know? Homosexuality. That's what I'm coming to. Okay, okay. All this, that's what I'm coming to. I know I make a long story short. I'm mm -hmm. basically. Anyway, it's wicked. Wicked. I've been over the cleanup. You know, they're thinking that I was just an ordinary mold that come through, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And they probably ran them away, but not you guys. They never ran you away, they never ran me away. Now, the point is, they didn't feel like testing the whole life. See me, look. Even though it's filed over, it's, 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 this is, yeah, this is it, you know. They play DVD up. So these are good mm -hmm. people. We just, you know, things happen, right? So we're here to save. We're not here to say, look, we got the word. So it, it, it's like, it's no excuse. You know what I'm saying? You got two. If you don't, want, if you don't like him, then why about them? You know what I'm saying? Like, either way it goes, you got the, you, you don't have the information coming from both sides. You might not like me, my, 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 my cousin, they might feel not like because you, you know, you, you got your things in order. Either way it goes, you got the big one, and we saying the same thing. So it don't matter, but the whole point is, homosexuality and all this stuff. So guess what I'm doing? I swear, bro, dude came to here. And I was like, hey man, what's up, man? And then he was like, oh, what's up, boom. So they, they start talking like funny stuff. So I, just, so I, so I told him, I said, look at me, bro. Every day when you see a pretty girl, you know, if you like her, go up to her, go up to her man. And tell her you like her, tell her your name. You know, man, I need you to do that like three times a day. You know what I'm saying? My name like, oh, I am, I am. Like, I'm trying to turn them back straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, with words. You know what I'm saying? Like, just give them encouragement. Like, say what things. I'm like, man, you know what's up? Yeah, but hey, like every day. be honest with you, bro. Yeah. You're gonna have a big task in front of you, you know. I ain't trying to. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, this ain't no. I mean, you know, like this ain't my main goal in life. Right. You know what I'm just saying, like, this, this, just giving you a heads up. Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't matter yeah. because it doesn't matter to me. But I'm just still just like this type of person that just go. Okay. Encouraging words. Yeah, because right, I right. read them like, like for real, too many women to a dude, dog. Right. Like in this day. Hey, but see, you know what? That's so that people are not in their right mind. Right. Because you should have to explain that to no one. Okay. They yeah. should be in the right spirit. They should know naturally. Right. That's yeah. that's, that's a natural order. Yeah, yeah they, but if they you show what they prove that, they that, to do that though, bro. like you even mentioned it, everything is going according to plan. To plan. Right. It was all prescripted, mm -hmm. and it serves as a token. Like, you know, if you um, ever watch one of these movies um, like that's dedicated to a treasure hunt. Remember the old movie, like The Goonies or something like that? They have a treasure map. Then you yeah. have uh, what they call it, uh, uh, like legion, oh, certain a legend. Legend. Yeah. legend. Yeah, so like, a map. Like a yeah, you have like a landmark yeah. to know where you at. Whenever you descend upon whatever village, city, you say, oh, I know where I'm at based upon the landmarks. Yeah. Well, we know that this America, Babylon the Great, that the scripture speaks about. For the very thing the brother said, all these homosexuals out here, yeah. that vibration of homosexuality, now listen, uh, listen. Uh, wickedness, uh, uh, confusion. Yes, look, look, this you know? Is, you guess where it starts from, though? Mm -hmm. Guess where it starts from? You don't have to say it. Because I'm a student, you don't have to be explained, but I'm going to say it anyway. Mm -hmm. From women, I blame them brothers. Yeah, yeah. Women raise, yeah. women build men, and we don't, and that's just facts. And men be a women. It's like mama gonna give son, give everybody a dream, you know. You know, you know go to school, do this, give you a dream. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? If you got three sons, two of them, guess what, big bro? Guess what, big bro? She raised raised different. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, look, bro, this is what I'm saying. Like um, uh, like that's why I plan, like, you know, uh the little break. Hey, but I'm gonna tell you, right? Yeah. It goes, it, it goes a little further than that. It's the truth to that. Yeah. Because yeah, the influence when you're going to like um, hands-on, you the have. The thought of it is just right. it's all wrong. Yeah, you have um, you don't have the men in the house, so you have these single women governing yeah. over these men, and they're still in that. They're still in that feminine spirit of them. But, but it, it goes a little further too. Right? He saw the so-called white man. Yeah. He have he set the stage for it. Because, hey, but behind his legislation, he keep the man out of the house. You sure? You know? Or, 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 or was it the woman that wanted the man out of the house? Right. They just blamed it on him. Right. And then, yeah. But, but who accommodated? She did. She did. Who accommodated? Because the woman ain't got the power. Yes, yeah, she do. 
What's he gave his right up? But, but, but who, who, <laughs> who that go to, to get the power from? Like, when the woman wants you at the house, they go get the same person she, who they, she who called, they She called the cops on you. Yeah, right? because she got the power. Right. But the power, she was given that power. That's just like he said. By uh, him. <laughs> right, by the so-called white man. You damn right. Yeah. And you but, know why? Right, because, like, like he said, uh, uh, she wants you out. But who accommodate, who accommodate that? Who facilitate that itch? You know, she got that itch, you need to be scratched. The so-called white man scratching, man. Yeah? No, That's why when you get into the nuts and bolts of it, the offender is Esau, the so-called white man. Those who set the laws, the legislation. The woman set the laws. Yeah. She just used Esau. I got a precept. <laughs> it's Sirach chapter 10 and verse 13. For pride is the beginning of sin, mm -hmm. and he that have it shall pour out abomination. Right, that's dealing with the so-called white man. He pours out abomination. He give her the liberty. Like when you go into the laws of the Bible, women shouldn't be walking around with spandex. Mm -hmm. Or divorcing. Right. The man's supposed to divorce. Right. The man do that. Yeah. But who give her, who give her the authority? The so-called white man. She exactly. She yeah. Was, you know she what? not. She not signing the legislation. That's why uh, you have a source of wickedness, man. Man, they no? have a source of root of jealousy, envy, and all that. But no one. You know, no yeah, one because yeah, it all goes into matter of fact. Uh, what's that? Ecclesiastes ten. So as the rulers of the city, get that real quick. Yeah, we can ready to close up for sure. Oh, that's good. Yeah. All right, come on. Wisdom Psalm 14 and 9. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike and hateful unto the most high. So the ungodly, or it's both ungodly, the reason you have women wearing leggings, it comes from the so-called white man. The reason why you see all these things homosexuality at a high rate, you damn right. Because it's because of the Hey, because think about it. No, the, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, what, what, What's another problem in our, in, in our community? Pork, all right. Uh, the women running the powder uh, there. Yeah, y'all was good. Y'all was good. Either oh, way. Uh, oh, my bad. Good. I thought. Oh, it's, no. a, it's, it's, a woman, it's, it's, it's a way of thinking. And there's it, two ways of thinking. It's one way men think and one way women think. You see what I'm saying? So that's the war, baby. Right? Yeah. The so let's say, like, too, like, let's say uh, when you consider. Uh, and the more souls they got. When you consider. Uh, the work, a job. You're supposed to really get paid the same day, man. The sun shouldn't set on. We only supposed to work. Right. Now, now, you know, you, 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 you know, 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 you you supposed to be paid that day. you don't supposed to wait a week, two right. weeks, right. or a month's salary to get paid. Okay. So that contributes to the, uh, you know, that upside down, what's that, uh, Jeremiah, oh no, Isaiah 29 chapter, surely you're turning the things upside down. All right, come on. Okay, this is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 2. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers, and what manner, and what manner of man the ruler of the city is. And who is the ruler of this city? Hmm, So-called white man. That's the ruler of this city, man. He's doing the dirty work. You know? Yeah, he's in power. Yep. So who's in charge? It's about what? As far as what? Uh, what we talking about? The Lord is in charge. Right, right, right. But I'm talking about like a different world. But this current kingdom, this is the kingdom you're in, America. That's right, that's right. It's, it's the so-called white man governs over. But it's right. Yeah. But they don't. Huh? But they don't. Yeah, they, they've been set up to rule. The That's why you got to operate under the, the so-called white man's uh, legislations and laws. You can't do what you want to do. Uh-huh, the women can. Yeah. And, and, the, and the ones who are... But, but... They can do whatever they want. Yeah, It says, such are all they that dwell therein. Right, so yeah, the people who dwell in the city, they're under the vibration of the so-called white man, go ahead. Uh, but jump down to uh, 13. It says, for the for pride is the beginning of sin, and he that have it shall pour out abomination. Oh yeah, he saw he's pouring out abomination. That's why you have homosexuality rapping here. All right? It says, and therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. And that's what the Lord Yahweh Shah is going to do by way of thermonuclear fire, that ultimate cleansing agent. Thank you.
like you say something too, going to that point out abominations. Because that's that's concerning his laws and legislation. Mm. He can put that shit on the books, man. His rhetoric, his commercial, he always put fuck commercial, uh, goddamn selling insurance. He had two flares, you know, two promos and shit, man. Yeah, that's true. That's just, true. just that. You selling insurance, but you also selling mm. that too, though. You know what well, I mean? Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah, you playing on the psyche of the people. Mm. And because these men are the order too, man. You know? These men, they're homos, they got feminine spirits on them too. Right, right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, of a, a failed marriage, and we really going to why he's so driven by his hateful women. That's, that's not going to work, man. No. All right? No, you have to dance to the song of Yahweh Shah. And see, uh, according to what the scriptures say, he saw it be identified as the offender. Matter of fact, uh, get that real quick. We end off right there. Uh, it's that Second Thessalonians. Okay. Yep, the second chapter. So we're in the right spirit, all right? That's the building blocks, OK? You find out who you is. And then you find out who your enemies are. Hey, because really that go hand in hand. Once you find out who you is by default, you find out the chips start to fall where they make. You find out who your enemies are. You see that? And then you, you have to be willing to receive what the scriptures say. You got to cast off on who you're willing to do that. Subdue your, own, subdue your own wisdom, man. Because you can make points. Everybody can make points. But those points, those points don't fall under the banner of uh, what the scriptures say, then it's gonna be it's gonna be rejected. The scriptures say a wise sinner, a wise tail, a wise sinner out of season will be uh, rejected. Yeah, I agree. God, this is what the second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except that come a father the way first. Right, go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed. Right. And that man of sin be revealed, man. So you can't somehow sidestep Esau. You know, and, and you can't say, yeah, but, but, no. Nope. It go back to Esau. Even your woman out of order, man. Even though we know it goes into the laws, but who facilitates it? The scripture said we have an evil eye. And no, towards, you have to give out towards your brother, the, the, the uh, daughter who is tender and delicate. She should have to give out towards her. And we know that goes back to the law. But who accommodated that? He saw it. That's why these women have a, a short attention span. They don't want to be with you. You know what I mean? For a certain amount of time. You know? And, and the so-called white men have all those options out there just tugging at her, you know? So he the one who facilitates the bullshit, man. So we on the right track when we call it the fucking devil. Let me read that one more time. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means, uh -huh. for that day shall not come. Yep, go ahead. Except that come and the way first. Right, and that happened. That prophecy was fulfilled. As the people, we fell away, man. It's well documented uh, uh, the falling of the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Right, so the son of perdition has to be revealed. Okay? And the part of revealing him is assessing him, scrutinizing him. You know, digging into his, his offenses, spotlighting, you know, highlighting, you know, his uh, uh, ill dealings and treacherous acts, his pursuit of power. And because the so-called white man right in his kingdom, he don't know that it's set up as an uh, uh, indictment against him. When you go into the history, for an example, 
When you look up all these different companies, from Wells Fargo and different banks and different companies, they were started by slavery. These buildings, these, these corporations is loan money, man. You know, bullshit that popped up is built off slavery. But every time they build a, a monument, a building, every time you get a, uh, you know, like an alert, you know, promoting a, a car insurance or whatever, that's an indictment against them. That's a monument, like, yep, this was built off slavery. This is a reminder that you are the ones. You the ones who conquered us, all right? So yeah, you know, you know yeah, uh, any of you out there, you know, guy fool and shit, you know. Yeah. But when you deviate from who's the problem, the source, that's equivalent to not acknowledging that you sick. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I see this lump on you, man, and you kind of sidestep it. No, but I believe it was because I had too many bills, man. Like, yeah. You're not being right. <laughs> you're not acknowledging the fact of what a problem, what the root of the problem lies. Alright, so with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory. Double honor to our teachers, the head of apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Shout out one to the fellow laborers out there, and as always, the believers, the Akim, as well as the Aqua, those who subscribe to this troop as well. So next time, shout out to DTA, a Bible Ball. Soon. Tonight. Every song. The end of the